We are taking a look at Ambernix's latest retro gaming handheld which comes in two models. The RG353V and the slightly cheaper RG353VS. Apart from the box design, the contents are essentially the same for the VMVS models. To start, we have the handheld itself. We will show them and the different case colours in more detail shortly. There is a 64GB micro SD card. There is already a 16GB card in the device which has the Linux operating system. This one is used for your game storage. Next is the user manual. On one side is in English and the other in Chinese. It's got everything you need to get up and running. There is a USB Type-C charge cable. This plugs into the port on the bottom of the handheld to charge. And last but not least, there is a screen protector and wipes for when applying it to the screen. The RG353V is available in four models. White, black transparent, grey and purple transparent. The VS is available in black transparent and grey only. The RG353V and VS are visually the same, measuring around 4.9 by 3.2 by 0.8 inches and weighing 193 grams. The display is a 3.5 inch IPS screen with a retro gaming friendly 640 by 480 resolution. The V model is touchscreen and the VS is not. Below are your standard gaming controls with classic D-pad, dual clickable, low profile analog sticks and buttons. In the middle is a function button which will bring up the menu or return to home depending on which OS you are using. The top has a USB Type-C port, a mini HDMI port for output to TV or monitor and a 3.5mm headphone jack. On the left is the volume rocker and on the right are two micro SD card slots. One is used for storage and the other for Linux OS. There is also a reset button and power button. The bottom of the handheld has a USB Type-C port which is used for charging the handheld. And on the back are your two sets of left and right shoulder buttons. The outermost two are easy to press while playing, but I had to adjust my hands a little and hook my finger to reach the inner buttons without pressing the outer ones as well. Both models have the RK3566 quad-core 64-bit Cortex-A55 processor running up to 1.8GHz. On the RG353V there is 2GB of LPDDR4 RAM and on the VS there is just 1GB. For storage, both models come with a 16 gigs card for the Linux operating system. The RG353V also has a 32 gigs high-speed internal E MMC storage, which is used for the Android operating system. Both models have Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 support for updating game data and multiplayer over the internet. They are both powered by a 3200 mAh rechargeable battery. Depending on what emulator you are running, you will get up to 6 hours battery life. Higher demanding systems like Dreamcast and Playstation will of course be less. We will now take a look at the operating systems. The RG353V has both Android and Linux, whilst the VS only supports Linux. After some testing, the performance is the same for both devices on Linux. The Linux OS comes with an emulation station style front end and RetroArch for the emulation side of things. Everything is set up and ready to play pretty much straight away. With this ease come some things to note such as choice of emulators and systems are restricted. The performance may also not be as high on the Android which has the faster Vulkan rendering support. All of the 8 and 16 bit emulators will run fine with no issues at all. We tried a bunch of systems including Master System, Mega Drive, PC Engine, SNES etc and they all run great. Likewise with the arcade emulator MAME, we tried a variety of games and they all run with no slowdown or issues. We did not expect any issues as the emulator is well established and very compatible. Into the higher end arcade emulation and CPS3. There's just a few games for this system but we had no issues with Street Fighter 3, everything runs great. PlayStation 1 works just fine. We tried a few different games and everything run at full speed with no lags or frame skipping. 
We tried a few different Dreamcast games and got mixed results. A fair number of games run okay with no issues. Then games like Sonic Adventure 2 are running slow and others have sound lagging issues. Dreamcast is hit and miss with what works and does not. Performance is faster on the Android however. On to some handhelds now. We start with the GBA and Sonic Advance 3. We tried a bunch of games and they all ran perfectly fine with no issues or frame drops. The games look great on this display as well. Moving on to its dual screen brother and again the games are running fine. Due to the 4-3 aspect ratio the two screens are squeezed into a small area but you can switch to single full screen and the games run spot on. For the PSP we are not getting great performance on our go to game for testing which is God of War. Not having Vulcan rendering hurts the performance a little and we get unplayable frame rates for this game. Other games do however play faster but don't expect perfect compatibility. Performance is a bit faster on Android but not by a great deal. Exclusive to the RG353 model is the Android operating system which uses the internal storage and supports touchscreen. And it is with Android that my annoyances with the handheld start to arise. We have seen a few Android handhelds from Ambedic and I would have thought that by now they would improve the Android side. The pre-installed emulators are just pre-installed. They are not set up to look in specific folders on your storage card for example. So it means you must go through each emulator one by one to set it up. There is an included front end of sorts which you activate in the Android drop down menu. After your storage card is scanned it will add any supported system and games to their respective menu options. It is quite basic but functional for the systems it does support which is not a large number. If you do add your own games you will also need to manually add your screenshots as it does not download them. Once your card is scanned you can then choose a game and it will run in RetroArch. RetroArch is the only redeeming quality on Android OS. It supports more emulators than on Linux with a wide variety of cores which go far beyond your usual consoles. You can download and play games on computers such as the Commodore 64, Amstrad CBC and Speccy through to newer consoles such as PlayStation Portable. Not every emulator is optimised on RetroArch so you may run into some slowdowns on higher end consoles. In this case you can use the individual emulators such as PPSSPP for a bit of extra performance. For all the classic consoles the performance is on par or better than the Linux OS so we won't cover those systems again. I have avoided showing Ether SX2 and the Dolphin emulators as quite honestly it's not worth spending the time getting them to run. You will find some basic games working but it's not worth the effort. I would recommend a more powerful handheld if this is what you want to play. And talking about individual emulators, there is no Dreamcast emulator pre-installed but we do get the totally unneeded Ether SX2 and Dolphin emulator that will run games at half speed because the processor is not fast enough. Why include something if the games are not playable? Also to note, Google Play Store is not installed so you will have to either sideload apps, try the many ways to install gaps or use an alternative such as APK Mirror or Amazon App Store. We understand China has restrictions but at least make available a firmware with Play Store that others outside China can install and get full use of. Overall I am not overly impressed with Android OS on the RG353V. It feels half finished, like someone has started installing some apps, got bored and gave up. If you have the time and patience you can make it nice and functional but I feel this should not be left to the customer and should be done by the manufacturers. This is a pre-production unit but generally little changes between Ambernix releases and models. On to a lighter note now and one thing you should consider if you have a spare micro SD card is to install a custom firmware. Arc OS was recently updated to include the RG353V and VS. It is quite easy to install and set up. We have an easy to follow guide linked in the description because we highly recommend trying it. Arc OS supports over 90 gaming systems as well as over 70 ports via Portmaster. 
Once installed, it is updatable online, so you should not have to mess around with setting up new cards with each update. After you've copied your games over to the microSD card, you're pretty much good to go. If you do not mind a bit of work, this is overall the best experience by far that you will have with these handhelds. Which model is right for you? The RJ353V does give you a bit more freedom of what you can use and install in terms of apps. And there is a slightly faster performance gain on some consoles. As for PS2 and to an extent GameCube emulation, it's not worth having a pre-installed apps at all. And don't forget that Android does take a fair bit of setting up compared to Linux. The Linux OS is on the other hand plug and play. However, you do not have as much freedom in terms of adding new systems, but you can simply switch it on and within a few moments you're in game. If time or patience is short, Linux is the obvious choice. In terms of hardware, you have a few extras on the V, such as internal storage but is only usable for Android. Having touchscreen support is nice, but how often will you use it for gaming controls? 2GB instead of 1GB of RAM is useful, but does it make a massive amount of difference when playing games that generally do not require it? If you go by the pros and cons, it tells me to buy the V model, as you can switch between Android and Linux for the best of both worlds. But then you have the excellent Arc OS, which is what OS both models should have installed by default. With that, you do not need all the extras that the V model brings. If you do want to save a few dollars a pounds, then the RJ353 VS makes absolute sense. You're not missing much, and you would be just as happy with this model running Ambedix Linux OS or Arc OS. You could pay a little more and gain the extra features, as well as having the choice of all three operating systems. Personally, I would rather spend my time briefly setting up Arc OS and running that on the RG353 VS. They are both decent handhelds, but the V model is let down by a half-baked Android OS. Let us know what you think and which OS you would use in the comments. You can order your RG353V and VS from us at droix.co.uk or droix.net for worldwide shipping. Don't forget to use the discount code RG3535OFF on the checkout. That wraps up this RG353V and VS review. We hope you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to keep up to date with the latest reviews and help to grow this channel. It does help us a lot. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in our next video.